In this lesson, we'll learn how to build our own utility class systems for Webflow so we can build sections effortlessly and have sites that load faster. So each time we click a style, Webflow is adding new lines to our code. I might set this flex to a line bottom and space apart. And here we've set a horizontal flex and it's looking all right, but we forgot to allow wrapping. So things are getting a bit squished here on mobile. So we could of course come back to desktop and set our flex to be a horizontal with wrapping applied. And when we do that, it's looking a bit better, but when it wraps, the text is no longer aligned to the bottom. And that's because we remembered to set our align bottom here, but forgot to set our rows to align to bottom as well. So there's a lot that could potentially slow us down if we don't apply it. And each time we do apply these things, it's adding more lines to our code. This is where a flex system can really help us in the end. So let's go ahead and clear these styles and apply the same layout, but with utilities instead. So we can create a utility of H flex for horizontal flex. And on the X axis, we can space them between. And on the Y axis, we can align them to the bottom. And when we do that, it's, it covers the row alignment, the regular alignment, it allows wrapping and everything is just good to go. So it's fully responsive here. Something else we might wanna do is apply gap, which we could do here. It's just gonna add one line to our code uh, by adding that gap there to space them apart. Or we could use utilities instead so that no extra line is added to our code. So I could add a gap small. And what happens if I have multiple of these hero sections throughout different pages of my site? Of course, we'd like to use components, but sometimes we do have to unlink that component. So if I want to make a design change here, what I can do is go ahead and rename the class. And let's go ahead and change this to maybe a vertical flex. So the button and text is underneath each other. We'll do V flex and let's align on the X axis to the right. And on the Y axis, let's align to the center. And when we do, now that is all set and aligned here. And this change we made here applies across both instances here. If I go ahead and change the gap and I decide maybe this needs to be medium instead, then this change I've made here affects every instance of the section throughout the site. So there's lots of ways we could think about creating a flex system. And one way would be to create utilities for each part of Flexbox. I like to start all my utilities with U dash. So I know it's a utility. We could create a U dash flex class that's only responsible for turning the Flexbox on. Then we could create other classes for setting alignment. So I'd wanna create on an empty div, a U flex vertical. And for this, I'm going to turn the flex on, set the direction to vertical, and then I'll go ahead and clear the display flex. So the only CSS attached to this class is the direction vertical. So now when these two classes are combined, we should get the style we want. So if I type U flex, this turns the flex on. And then if I add U flex vertical, this sets the direction. And we could continue that process for alignment and anything else. But this leads to a lot of class stacking to get the style we want. And Webflow really wasn't built for stacking so many classes in mind. Now, this is the cleanest code, but it's a bit slower process to apply. So what I've done instead here is create one class that handles all parts of Flex. So it turns the Flex on, it sets the direction and the alignment, all from one class. So here's our vertical flex classes that is left center, left center we see here. And then we have the exact same in the horizontal version, left center, and that's left center. Now for the horizontal versions, I've set them to allow wrapping by default, since that's the most common use case for a horizontal flex. Now, if we want a version that just doesn't wrap, we don't have to recreate all these classes in a no wrap version. What we can do instead is this is where I would stack the extra class. So here I have a horizontal flex no wrap that just sets a flex direction horizontal without wrapping. It doesn't touch the alignment or do anything like that. So if I wanna use the same class and keep the align center and row align center here, but all I wanna do is change this to not wrap, I can add a U H flex of no wrap and then it'll just override the direction to not include the wrapping. So that's how we can make the most out of our classes, keeping it clean. It's always going to be a balancing act of how many utilities do we want to end up stacking versus how clean of code do we want. So you might decide that you don't want gap utilities at all in your project. You're perfectly fine 
not stacking this extra class and instead of applying it here. That means you will have an extra line of code for each layout you create, but it makes it easier to manage. So it's a balancing act between how easy is this layout to manage versus how clean is the code and the end result. Now, we always want to start with a component specific class. This class doesn't have any styles applied to it. In fact, if we check our code here, it's not even going to show up in our CSS file at all because we haven't applied any style to it. It's just there so we can make global updates to this class. So I can apply a U and I'll do a horizontal flex so they stack side by side. Let's align them to the left so when they wrap, they're going to align to the left. And vertically, let's align them to the center. So if I had a larger sort of play button here, it would align center with that. And so now we have that flex applied here and let's add a U gap of extra small. So we have all those styles here. That means on lower breakpoints, when these buttons do actually have to wrap, this is the direction they're going to anchor. Now we could of course use these exact classes without the component class. So I could remove the hero button wrap and add all these classes on instead. The problem with that is we're forced to create utilities for every possible scenario and it's really just not worth it. So what if we decide later on down the line that we want a top border on this? Maybe we want it to have a one pixel border width, maybe it's white, maybe it's a lower opacity, maybe it needs some top padding or something. So if we only used the utility classes, we would have to create utilities to handle all these extra things and stack the padding on, stack the border. It's just too much to account for. And what if we decide that on mobile, for whatever reason, we wanted to switch these hero buttons parent to a block or a grid or something. Then we have to think about utilities for mobile displays and all these different things, and it gets really out of hand pretty fast. So as much as it is a pain to think of unique names for every single element, it's also a huge benefit in the long run to making your sites more maintainable if we start always with a custom class. We don't have to use it for anything, but it gives us that freedom to have the flexibility in the future if we do need it. One last tip is to be thoughtful of how your utilities are named. So if I add this extra small, because it's one word, I can double click and Webflow will highlight the whole word. Then I can easily rename that to be medium and it applies across both instances. But if I would have named this extra dash small, then double clicking only highlights one word at a time and slows down the process. So this wraps up a high level of how to create utilities in Webflow.